You've mentioned many of them. Can you tell me what crops are currently genetically modified and which ones are they considering genetically, genetically modifying? Okay, crops that are GMOs. Soy, that are on the market for sale that we know about. Soy, corn, cotton, which is used for cottonseed oil, canola, sugar beets, alfalfa, zucchini, yellow squash, apple, potato, plus there's salmon, which is genetically engineered and sold in Canada, and it may be sold as early this year in the United States. Um, so that's 10 crops and, and a fish. Now, there's a gene-edited non-browning mushroom that was approved and never, as far as I know, it wasn't introduced. But they didn't need to, they, you don't need to tell the FDA if you introduce a GMO. And the people that created the non-browning mushroom sent a letter to the USDA and said, you don't need to evaluate us. And they said, no, no, it's gene editing. You didn't transfer genes between species. Not our problem. So, and we don't know if there's rogue scientists in China that are creating genetically engineered whatever and sending it to the U.S. without telling us. They don't have to legally. It's basically, you know, the, the loose regulations are going to turn around and bite us because we, we don't even know what we're eating. But for now, we, we think that these are the 10. Soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, alfalfa, zucchini, yellow squash, um, oh, Hawaiian papaya, apples, and potatoes, 11. Apples and potatoes. I missed one. I was like, why is it 10 and not 11? I guess I've been miscounting all these years. No, I just miscounted. What have you learned about Monsanto based on all the time you've spent researching them and their industry? A former Monsanto scientist told me that three of his colleagues were testing the milk from cows treated with Monsanto's bovine growth hormone, found so much of a cancer-promoting hormone in the milk, IGF-1, that they stopped drinking milk. Unless it was organic, one bought his own cow. And uh, he also told me that when they found that corn fed to rats caused problems, instead of withdrawing the corn, they redesigned, they rewrote the study to hide the effects. Now, none of that, none of that surprised me. But it's indicative of a corporate culture that is the worst of human characteristics, willing to expose the entire population to something that you know could hurt or kill them. This scientist was, that I talked to was no longer working at Monsanto, and he said, the rats were fed corn for 90 days. In southern Africa, they ate corn three times a day as a staple their whole lives. And the percentage of corn was higher than the rats were fed. Rats are typically fed up to 33% of the corn in Monsanto's study. In Africa, you could eat 50 or 70% in times of famine, 90% of your caloric intake as corn. He said to me, I got very concerned about what was going to happen in southern Africa. Years later, and this is reported in my film, Genetic Roulette, talking to a veterinarian in the U.S. who had a South African client whose pigs and cows were, had serious health problems. He was losing money. The veterinarian said, don't feed him GMOs. So he grew non-GMO corn and started feeding his animals the non-GMO corn. They got better. And then he ran out, had to buy corn from the market. They got worse. Then he had enough corn grown on his land to feed them year-round, non-GMO, and they got better. The people working on his farm were sick. He needed 50, he had to keep 60 employed because 20% were always too sick to work. He was spending a lot of money on medicines, severe flu-like symptoms, headaches, inflammation. And he told the veterinarian once or twice a month he'd be talking to a worker, and we'd notice that the eyes would move in different directions from each other. And he knew from experience that within one or two days, they would be dead. He didn't know why. They were eating the corn he was growing for the animals, which was 100% genetically engineered. 
So these people on this farm were eating more GMO crops, corn in particular, than perhaps anywhere else on the planet except in other farms with similar situations. And they had a massive health issue with high death rates. Then when he switched to non-GMO corn, the workers started eating non-GMO corn, and they got better until he ran out. The same thing happened with the animals, happened with the workers. He hadn't realized what was going on. No one knew. And so the concern by the Monsanto scientist who had left Monsanto appears to be the reality, that the people in southern Africa who are like the canaries in the coal mine, the people eating more than any other humans, are getting seriously ill. So there are people in Monsanto who used to work in Monsanto. Another person, Kirk Azevedo, used to sell for Monsanto. He discovered some of the practices, tried to blow the whistle, was ostracized. He left the company, said, I don't want to be part of that disaster. I interview him. And it's in my book and one of my movies. So we have a situation where not everyone who works for Monsanto is a bad person. But I've talked to people who could not handle that culture that was willing to put up with such reckless and dangerous behaviors. And they left. When I think about the kind of rigged research and attacks that they've done around the world, just one idea, just one concept, just to throw one more in. They, want, they wanted to introduce Terminator technology into GMO crops so that you could not grow the offspring, so that it, was, it would create sterile seeds. And they were going to target the 1.4 billion farmers that save seeds around the world. Now, the saving of seeds creates this massive biodiversity, millions upon millions of varieties, which is necessary for food security. If there's a disease, if there's a famine, if there's climate change, you take these other species that you're growing and you use them and you are, become a savior. Otherwise, if it's just a monocrop, you end up with a potato famine and you can wipe out and kill people. Monsanto was willing to risk the food security of the planet, hoping to introduce terminator seeds into all varieties to force all of the farmers in the world to just buy the seeds in the catalog, to narrow the diversity on the planet so that they could make more money, which would almost certainly ultimately result in massive numbers of deaths. So this is the type of thinking that they have.